So one of the most common questions that I get on this channel and in my Instagram DMs is, Sam, what is the best way of starting an online business? And there's so many different ways that I can answer this question and there's so many different things that a beginner needs to think about. So I thought, you know what, let me make a video today going through six of the most important things that you need to be aware of when it comes to starting an online business. I'm gonna break down these six different elements in this video in detail, which is business idea, business registration, bank accounts and credit cards, employees, growing and scaling, and taxes. And if you're new to this channel and you're thinking, who is this guy and why should I spend the next 10, maybe 15 minutes listening to what he has to say, welcome, my name is Sam. And I've been fortunate enough to start various different online businesses that have enabled me to quit my full-time job, travel around the world to various different amazing locations while still being able to earn a source of income from all of my different businesses even when I'm on holiday. So I'm sure I'm gonna be able to point you in the right direction. All right, so jumping straight into one of the first things that every single beginner is going to need to think about, which is the business idea. We live in a day and age right now where there's so many different options out there to choose from. Whether you wanna start eBay dropshipping, Shopify dropshipping, an affiliate marketing business, maybe you want to start some sort of AI company, an agency, there's various different routes that you can take when it comes to starting an online business. And that's why it's very important for you to spend some time to think about what is the best idea for you and your particular situation. That's why it's quite difficult for me to give someone a specific answer when it comes to exactly what they should do to make money online. One thing that I found is that every single method out there works and the possibility of being able to generate an income from them is definitely viable, but it's gonna be down to you to think about what matches your personality, what matches your passion, and what business model do you know that you're gonna be able to stick with through the hard times, through any obstacles, because that's the only way that you're gonna be able to be successful. To give you a quick example using my own journey, one of the first ever online businesses that I built was an eBay store, and the reason why I specifically chose that business model is because I used to be a customer on eBay many years before selling my first official item. So I knew exactly how the website worked. I knew exactly how the platform operated from the perspective of a customer. So I knew I had a high chance of being a successful seller. And that's exactly what happened. I was able to grow my sales from $5,000 a month, $10,000 a month, all the way up to $50,000, $60,000 a month. And the point that I'm trying to say is that when you do get to this stage over here and you're trying to plan out exactly which business is going to be the best one to start, you need to pick one that you're passionate about, that you know has the chance to make the money that you plan on making, and you know that you're gonna be able to continue with over the long term. But this now brings me on to one of the next common questions that I get quite often, at least a couple times a week, which is, Sam, do I need to register the online business that I've decided to start? Now, as a quick disclaimer, this is gonna depend on the country that you live in because the business registration rules in America are different from the rules here in the UK. And just generally speaking around the world, they're slightly different. But there's one thing that I know for a fact that most of you need to consider, which is not to register your business from day one. If you're a complete beginner and you're new to the world of building a business, my advice is to operate it as a sole trader and kind of get the hang of things, bring in some sort of revenue and prove the concept. That's how things work here in the UK anyway. In the UK, you're able to operate as a sole trader. You're gonna be able to sell whatever products that you wanna sell, build whatever business that you wanna build. And it's only until you build up some sort of momentum and you're able to know that the business that you're building actually works, that's the point where you're gonna be able to register it as a limited company. So my advice to any beginner is to not put too much importance on registering your business from the early days because you may wanna pivot, you may wanna change things, you may want to switch things around. So it's not advised to do this from day one. With the majority of the online businesses that I'm running right now as we speak, that are bringing in tens of thousands of dollars every single week, most of them started off with me building them as a sole trader for at least five months, seven months, even up to a year in some cases. And the reason why I tend to do it this way is because I don't wanna deal with all of the documentation and all of the paperwork that goes with starting and registering a business until I know that it's something that I'm gonna build over the foreseeable future, that's the point where I decide to register it. But this now brings me on to one of the next things that most of you are going to need to think about 
when it does come time for you to start your online business, which is understanding why you need a bank account and a credit card specifically for your business. So when it comes to getting a bank account or a credit card, you can either apply for a personal one, and of course you can apply for a business one. Now, another question that I get quite often is, Sam, do I need a business bank account from day one as soon as I start building my business, as soon as I start generating sales? Now, legally speaking, you don't need a business bank account from day one, from my knowledge. The way that you can do it is you can use a personal bank account. Ideally, you want to make sure that it's not one that you're using on a day-to-day -day basis because the last thing that you want to do is mix up all of your transactions in terms of your personal spend to your business spend because that's going to be a little bit of a headache down the line. But if you are able to apply for some sort of sole trader account or even if you've registered your business and you're able to get a business account, this is going to be the best thing that you should think about doing as soon as possible. But when it comes to the credit card side of things, you don't need one. But the reason why I always advise most people to try and get a credit card even if it's a personal one, and of course, if they're able to get a business one, is because when it comes to running a business, there's going to be various different things that you're going to pay for. And not only does a credit card help with cash flow, but you're also able to, number one, build up business credit, and you're also able to accumulate points that you can now use on your business in any way, shape or form that you want to. As you can see over here, I've got these three different American Express business cards for three of my different registered businesses. And again, they help me in so many different ways. The reason why I like them is because I'm able to build up a relationship with Amex. And of course, I'm able to use the points that I'm accumulating on flights and so many other things that I spend on my business. So the American Express Gold Card is the one that I'd recommend that you look into when it comes to applying for your first credit card. And I've got a link down below that's going to give you a sign up bonus if you use that link and you register today. But those are the main things that you need to think about when it comes to the finance side of things. But moving on to one of the next questions that I get, which is, Sam, when exactly should I think about hiring my first employee? Now, this is going to be dependent on what type of business you're thinking about starting. But with most businesses out there, I would say that the best way to do things is to learn the skills and do majority of the different things yourself so that when it does come time for you to hire someone, you're going to be able to train them in the best possible way. And to give you an example of what I'm talking about, using my e-commerce business, I did everything when it came to finding winning products, dealing with my suppliers, customer service, packing all of my orders on a day-to-day -day basis, going to the post office, shipping them out, dealing with fulfillment, with the drop shipping side of things, just everything that goes into running an e-com store. I did everything myself so that as soon as I started hiring things out and outsourcing things, I was able to know exactly if they were making mistakes. I was able to train them and just generally I was able to understand my business better. So the main point that I'm trying to make right now is that from day one, you don't really want to think about hiring employees. Number one, it's going to cost a lot of money and you want to use your money when it comes to getting your business off the ground. And number two, you're not really going to understand your business fully if you're giving certain responsibilities to someone else. But again, this is all dependent on what type of business you're thinking about starting. It also depends on your experience. And it depends on your budget when it comes to the business that you're thinking about building. But this actually now brings me on to the next thing that you guys need to think about, which is growth and scale. So as I told you at the start of this video, I've been fortunate enough to start various different online businesses that have also generated multiple millions of dollars in sales. And if there's one common thing that I've noticed with all of these different businesses is that I've always had to have the mindset of growth and scale. If you neglect this element, then you're either going to stay in the same position year after year, or what's going to happen is that you're going to end up declining. So it's your job as the entrepreneur to always think about ways that you're going to be able to scale your business. It's not always good to rely on what worked yesterday, but also have the mindset of exactly how you're going to be able to grow things in the future. So using my e-com store as an example, once again, the way that I was able to scale it was that initially I was selling on eBay, as I've already told you, but eventually I ended up selling the exact same products and building the exact same brand 
on the Shopify platform. Doing this allowed me to place my products on the Google Shopping homepage, which brought in brand new customers and allowed me to double the amount of revenue that the business was making. From that point, I now decided to also sell on the Amazon platform and making this decision allowed me to again increase my sales and have another stream of income. Most people end up seeing a little bit of success and it makes them complacent and of course it all depends on what your goals are and what you're trying to do and what type of business you're trying to build but if you do want to see success over the long term and you don't want it to be temporary this is definitely something that you need to think about. So just like with all of these different elements one common question that I get in my DMs, in my email, in the comments down below is, Sam, I want to start a business, but how exactly should I think about taxes from day one? Is it something that I'm going to need to pay or do I not need to pay it because my business isn't serious yet? And to quickly answer that question, in most places around the world, whether you're an individual or your business, if you've sold some sort of product and you've made some sort of revenue or profit, you're going to have to pay some sort of tax. So similar to what I said with the business registration, it's going to be dependent on what country you live in and how the tax structure works in that country. For example, here in the UK, as soon as you register your business, you're going to have to pay something called corporation tax. This is 25% of the profit that your business made. If you now decide to pay yourself a salary or a dividend, you're going to have to pay personal income tax. If you decide to hire employees, you're now gonna to have to pay employee tax. If you're an e-commerce business that's importing products from China, you're gonna to have to pay import taxes. And with most business types here in the UK, if your revenue goes over 85,000 pounds in a financial year, you're going to have to pay something called value added tax, also known as VAT. So these are the main taxes that I've personally had to pay over the past seven, eight, nine years of me being a business owner. But it's super important for you to research exactly what the tax laws are in your own particular country. But one thing that I would say is that if you are able to reduce your taxes in a legal way, this is definitely something that you should think about doing. Because the last thing that you want to do is pay thousands of dollars, euros or pounds in taxes every month when you could be reinvesting that money back into your business. And that's why recently I made the big decision to move my business operations over to Dubai because over there it's 0% personal income tax and around 0% business profit tax as well. And I'm not saying that as a beginner, from the very beginning, you need to have the mindset of moving to a different country. But what I am saying is that taxes is gonna be a big part of the business that you're building. So initially you need to plan for this, you need to think about it, and you need to include it in all of your different business decisions. So I wanted this video to be a simple, basic guide to kind of point you guys in the right direction when it comes to starting an online business. If you've enjoyed it so far, don't forget to press the like button. I really appreciate that. And comment down below if you want to see more videos like this where I explain basic business principles to help you on your journey. And if you also want to sign up to a completely free email newsletter where every single week, I'm going to be giving you guys business tips, tricks and hacks that I used when it came to scaling my business, you're going to be able to sign up to it for completely free by clicking the first link in the description down below. And if you also want to watch a recent vlog that I made where I show you guys me moving from London to Dubai, just everything that went into the process of me setting up the company over in Dubai, you're going to be able to check that vlog out by clicking the link over there. Watch that straight after this because I'm sure that you're definitely going to enjoy it. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Make sure you stay safe out there. Peace.